Hi, this is Coach Chuck of the National Free Flight Society Youth Development Program. In this video, Coach Brian will present uh, covering your Science Olympiad plane with the Mylar covering. And this is a excerpt from a live uh, one hour session on tips and tricks for Science Olympiad flight programs from 2022. And the entire video is linked in the uh, comment section below. So with that, we'll get started with Coach Brian, and we will finish with some answers to questions that were uh, provided during the live program. So uh, I'm going to show quickly um, a demonstration of covering with ultrafilm. So this is the 142 milligram per square inch film that comes with uh, some of the kits. Uh, it's also sold by, uh, I think, Ray Harlins on his website. Um, so I have skipped a couple steps so that we can move along quickly. But normally we would take the roll of covering and we'll spread it out on the table, uh, a big piece big enough to give you a couple inches or an inch on every edge of the covering frame that you made. And uh, I like to cut it with a rotary cutter. It's a fabric cutter. It's like a rolling razor blade and you just pull it along. It doesn't have to be very precise and cut a piece off. Uh, once you have a piece cut, the next step is to wrinkle it. And I would wrinkle it something like this, where you gather the covering into a ball. Uh, don't grab it as a whole and pull it into a ball because if you happen to grab an air bubble, uh, you can pop the air bubble, which means you just pop the covering. So then I'm going to massage it with my fingers. Sorry that you're looking at a side view of my face if you've got my um, second device showing also, uh, because I'm watching the screen to see what my fingers are doing. So I do this about 60 seconds and then spread it out. And the reason for wrinkling the coverings uh, are a couple. One is it's less static then it's easier to handle. And the other is maybe it's a little bit uh, better, has better aerodynamic properties. Um, a little bit roughened surface, you know, like the surface of a golf ball has dimples on it. So normally I will gather the covering up again and wrinkle it a second time. I'm not going to do it today because that takes a little bit of time and we're trying to cover a lot of topics. The second wrinkling, you might be able to see this a little in the glare here, that some of the wrinkles are big and some of the wrinkles are small. So it's completely a personal preference. I don't think it makes a big difference, but when you wrinkle it a second time, it kind of gets a different pattern of wrinkles going. And the overall effect is um, a smoother wrinkled look. So um, we do it twice because I think it looks cool. So then you get just a regular chapstick and this covering frame is just one quarter by one inch hard balsa wood and a few gussets in the corners to keep it from coming apart. And then crayon on the uh, chapstick, doesn't have to be super heavy, but a reasonable amount so that it's going to stick to the covering well. And uh, this is a small covering frame. Normally the covering frame that we'll use will be big enough to get the wing, the stabilizer, the winglets and the rudder all in one um, shot. So it might be, you know, 24 inches by 11 some odd inches. But once you have the um, chapstick applied, just hover the frame above the covering I flipped it over, of course, you saw that, so that I'm pressing the chapstick into the covering. And then I'm going to smooth it down to get it bonded. And then I'll slide it off the table. I won't lift it straight up because sometimes a little air will get caught and uh, you'll end up with uh, pulling the covering off. Now the part that takes the most practice to get good at, I think, is smoothing the covering. You can see I'm rolling my thumbs across the chapstick covered surface so that I'm improving the bond of the chapstick uh, to the covering at the same time that I'm smoothing it. 
So I will get it pretty smooth. And then you can see too that um, if there's a wrinkle here, here's a big one, you can move it in the direction of a corner by smoothing with your thumb and also pushing in one direction, pushing to the side. Again, I'm gonna get it pretty smooth, but not maybe not do as good a job as I normally do. And uh, just for the sake of time here. And you're not gonna get the, you're not gonna mount the flying surface within, you know, a, an inch of the edge. So you don't need to get it perfectly smooth all the way to the edge. But I'm gonna call that good. All right, so the covering is smooth enough at this point. And the next step you're gonna see part of, I, I think that the uh, camera that shows me my person is also pinned so that you can see that I'm holding up a box that has two sides cut out and it has a small piece of paper in it, let's get it up here, that has a little crown in it. And the idea behind that crown is one edge of the flying surface is going to be on that crown like that when I spray the glue. And the reason for that is when you spray the glue across the uh, flying surface, if it's flat on a sheet of paper, you might find that it's stuck to the sheet of paper and you're gonna destroy it while you try to lift it up. So I'm gonna spray this next to me. And unfortunately I don't have a camera set up that will let you see me doing this, but I'm gonna use uh, 3M77. That's pretty much the only glue that um, is going to really hold this covering well. And you can practice with this if you have a bunch of newspapers set out and just spray a small area until you get comfortable with it. And hold the can about 18 inches away from the flying surface. And I'm gonna spray at a rate of about one second per foot. So it's gonna go And I'm gonna aim at one leading edge, at the leading edge and then at the trailing edge. So I'll make two passes. But I'm gonna shake the can a little too. All right, so back to the workbench. So we can get the workbench view. So I've picked up the flying surface and I've flipped it over. So the sticky side is this side. And I'm going to set it down. Normally I'd be doing multiple parts so that I would try to pick a corner where you know I can get the other parts on the same um, piece of covering too. But uh, once it touches down, don't try to move it. If it's touched, it's stuck. If you try to shift it again, it'll probably just have a problem with the covering. Then I like to, I like to put one hand underneath and one hand above and use the two fingers a little bit like a hammer and an anvil and make sure the covering is bonded. Initially, you might see that the covering doesn't like to get stuck to the leading and the trailing edge that well because of the curve of the airfoil. So this solves that problem that the uh, curve of the airfoil, or by doing this, you can get the covering stuck pretty well. All right, so uh, then there's two ways that you could use to um, cut the covering on the edge of the flying surface. One would be with a blade. My favorite blade to use is a number 10 blade. Um, I think the curved bottom edge is a little easier to work with than a number 11 that's real pointy. And I'll cut with the flat part of the blade. So I'm gonna poke near the middle of one of the edges, pretty close to the edge, and I'm gonna use a sawing motion upwards. And I'm going to cut from the middle of that leading or trailing edge to almost to the corner. I'm gonna stop about an eighth of an inch from the corner. And then I will cut in the other direction. The other way that you can cut the covering is with a low temperature soldering iron or a micro cautery pen. And um, 
that does a really clean job of cutting, um, but you may not have that tool. So this is a micro cautery pen. And when you press the button, it starts to heat up. And this will be a little bit tricky to see, but it melts the covering. When I've done one strip of it, I will hold it up and see if I can get it to catch the light so that you can see it better. All right. So you can see that I've cut with heat all along that edge. So uh, I'm gonna cut to within an eighth of an inch or so of the corner again. And I'm gonna go all the way around so that I can remove the flying surface and show you the final step. You do wanna keep this moving. If you stop and uh, hold still at any point in time, you could start to heat up the covering um, on the flying surface and you'll see it start to wrinkle or do or tighten or do kind of crazy things. So we'll get this edge cut with the cautery tool. So I've left all four corners uncut so that the part doesn't drop out of the covering until I'm ready to catch it. Now I'm gonna cut the corners and it's gonna drop into my hand. All right, so that's a covered flying surface. Um, if you have little raggedy edges of covering hanging over your leading and trailing edge, you can take a small sanding block. This is 150 grit just bonded to a piece of pine. And then if you're gonna sand these edges, sand them down and away from the carbon rod and keep your fingers near where you're working. Don't try to sand way over here while you're holding way over here. You might have some problems if you do that. So I'll sand down and away, and you'll see little slivers of covering get removed, and then you can get it nice and clean and neat. So if, um, uh, another thing to remember is the spray glue I use, 3M77, is extremely heavy. So that spraying one second per foot keeping the can moving and maybe just two passes, one aimed at the leading edge, one aimed at the trailing edge is all you need. If you put on more than that, you can add quite a bit of weight. So our wings last year, 2022 um, airplanes, 2021 airplanes, um, this covering with this um, glue, 3M77 glue sprayed correctly, added one tenth of a gram. So the wings I think were about eight tenths of a gram and um, after covering, they were nine tenths of a gram each for the biplane. So that's covering. Well, what mill covering are we using? Uh, this is um, called Ultrafilm, and it's the same thing sold by Freedom Flight Models um, and Ray Harlan's website. Uh, it's the heaviest covering that they um, indoor modeling community uses. It's 142 milligrams per 100 square inches. It's, it's, it's a fraction of a mil, very tiny fraction of a mil. And the other option for covering, because Science Olympiad is actually a fairly heavy plane, this uh, P18 has a grocery store uh, veggie bag covering. This is not the bags you get at the front of the store but the really thin bags you get back at the, the vegetable section. Um, it's heavier than ultrafilm, uh, but you can easily build an eight gram plane with that covering. The instrument used to melt the covering, somebody's asking about, and um, this is a, called a cartery. You can get this from uh, indoor free flight uh, supply. Uh, you can also, uh, I think I got this one on Amazon. It's called Perfect End Thread Burner. So it's actually a medical cartery tool, but um, that's, it's repackaged and relabeled as a thread cutting uh, tool. And that was on Amazon for uh, 15 or 20 bucks. Covering the layer you put 
I found the answer to the number of microns for the covering. It's 1.8 microns thick. And I know someone was asking in mils, but 1.8 microns thick. So somebody's asking what temperature should the cartery be at? Um, I think if you could find something in the 500 to 600 range, it's ideal. But these uh, thread cutting uh, uh, bur thread burners, um, they tend to start out a bit hot when you first put a battery in them. And you have to be careful that you don't melt your covering too quick. But you just uh, you can pulse the button or, or whatever. But when the battery is about half old, it's almost perfect. So. Uh, and I believe this is rated on Amazon at something like 700 or 750. Yeah. It will actually glow orange with a fresh battery. Um, and to me, that's a little bit high. You probably want to be in the, the 500 degree F range. Um, and if, if you have a small soldering iron, you can uh, use, use that as well. Somebody asking, is the cartery better than the standard razor blade? Uh, the thinner... Uh, you're covering, the more you're going to want uh, heat to cut it rather than a razor blade because the razor can snag and, and um, tear the covering. Uh, the cartery will give you a smooth cut every time. We started using the carteries when we started doing uh, F1D, and that covering is about a quarter of the thickness uh, from the um, uh, right stuff. Covering. All right. Thank you, Chuck.